okay uh, so are you able to see Okay, sir. Uh, so, sorry because of uh, i think uh, that is uh, because of the zoom some like they have limit the time limit now okay that's why sometimes before that it was all right so next time i think uh, we should not be doing on zoom okay we'll try to do on some do on some other Okay, uh, so uh, this was uh, actually uh, in which you have seen. Uh, it is a uh, medial meniscus injury, and uh, it, uh, with the PCL as well. Okay, see again, uh, you can see over here. See, see, so it was medial meniscus as well as PCL. Okay, because the knee has been hit on the ground like this. Okay. So it was back force. So obviously the PCL will get damaged, and it was the knee was little bit medially rotated. So even medial meniscus or medial collateral ligament might be injured. Okay. Okay. So coming to the knee joint, uh, if you are talking about the knee joint, uh, we have got like uh, almost uh, like uh, the. It, if you talk about the sports injury almost like 12% of the injury is account for only for the knee joint knee joint injury mainly if you are talking about the football or soccer or like uh, badminton okay in that also sometimes knee got to state than uh, the knee uh, than i don't i don't know whose mic is on mute okay yeah. So almost 12% of the total injury is of a knee injury, okay? And uh, knee injury can be either of the ligaments, that is cruciate ligament, anterior cruciate or posterior cruciate, then collateral ligament, medial and lateral collateral ligament, then we have got the joint capsule as, as well, then cartilage, articular or meniscal, okay? And then it can be uh, even the bony fracture or a vulvar or compression fracture or bone uh, bruising as well, okay? So all these things, it comes in the knee injury, not only the soft tissue like ligament injury or like meniscus injuries, knee injury, okay. Even like uh, you can uh, say a, like bony fracture or like a version uh, sometimes or like compression fracture is of the knee injury. Then muscle and tendons uh, can lead to knee injury as well, okay. Uh, so knee injury Knee injury is not of only of the soft tissue, it can be of the heart tissue as well, okay. And the main goal of assessment and management of the knee injury is to, mainly uh, we are doing assessment being a physio, what are the main purpose of doing the assessment? In order to rule out the fracture, if there is any fracture, then minimize the pain or swelling, you can say, then maintain the range of motion or like if uh, the muscles are weak, we have to like strengthen the muscles, okay, uh, in order to gain the proper range of motion for all these purpose, we are doing the knee assessment and then management, okay. So uh, the first thing is that, first thing we have to assess if there is any knee injury, we have to assess for the fracture, okay. Uh, if there is a fracture immediately, you have to send that patient to the uh, uh, orthopedic department. If it's like normal, like, uh, 
one degree ligament injury or like normal hand injury or slight you can see that pulling of the muscles or tendon then you can easily manage with the physiotherapy or other uh, treatment as well okay so uh, coming to the reason what are reason uh, reasons for the knee injury can be like uh, it can be either because of the muscle weakness or sometimes the tight ligaments so okay there is no flexibility in the ligament so uh, easily this ligament might get tear and then uh, biomechanical misalignment okay if there is like flat foot there is more chance of like uh, you can say that medial collateral ligament injury okay then if there is like a foot is inverted then there is more chances of getting uh, again the lateral collateral ligament injury if knee is hyper extended then there is more chances of getting the pcl injury so depending on the biomechanical misalignment okay uh, there might be some chances of the injury then one of the most important reason is the sports injury might be uh, like see uh, sometimes uh, because of uh, what happens this uh, sports injury occurs because of the negligence or sometimes because of a specific reason purposefully uh, the player do that sometimes because of the collision or something like that uh, it can happen or sometimes again uh, because of this uh, you can say environment or like the uh, like uh, the uh, ill uh, like uh, ill managed uh, equipment can lead to the injury as well okay or accident or trauma or previous unhealed injury if there is any previously unhealed injury then also it can lead to the like uh, injury of the knee joint okay so uh, assessment uh, this is a little bit difficult uh, because uh, if there is acute injury uh, because of the pain or swelling it is very difficult to uh, assess uh, completely the, what all ligament or meniscus or soft tissue is injured so what we do we usually try to do uh, initially we try to like manage the uh, injury with the conservative management try to decrease the pain decrease the swelling okay reduce the swelling and try to assess again after 3 4 days okay so that it will be more easy for you see so uh, assessing uh, knee joint uh, not only you have to do with the special test we have to do the movement analysis then weight bearing testing then inspection or tendon if you have to check if there is a swelling bruises or something like that if fusion is there in the joint then uh, you have to check that as well uh, then after that you can check for the specific range of motion of the knee joint all these like active or like active assisted you can say asymmetric uh, resisted exercise but the uh, movement uh, okay and then passive movement as well so all these movement you have to check active okay asymmetric resisted exercises uh, sorry movement and then you have to check for the passive movement as well after that uh, uh, check for the extent of the muscles okay uh, muscles uh, associated with the knee joint like we have got the quadriceps then we have got the hamstring then tibialis anterior tibialis posterior vmo and all these muscles okay you have to check once you have checked all these then go for the specific like a special test okay in order to rule out the other structures okay so what all special tests you can do for what all things okay so for the special test basically we will be discussing about uh, the main uh, like injury which occurs in the knee joint is like we have got uh, the acl uh, rupture then pcl okay then collateral ligament whether it is medial or lateral ligament so for that we are doing the varus and valgus stress test then we have got the mascal injury back mori test is uh, uh, one of the like uh, very efficient test for the meniscus injury okay uh, there is uh, again variation in that okay uh, so different position is used to for in order to test the different meniscus different uh, location of the meniscus then we have got the patella dislocation or patella apprehension test okay so dislocation of the patella you can check so what we'll do uh, we will be uh, like uh, discussing about one one technique uh, one one special test okay because uh, we have to again uh, discuss about the taping as well uh, okay uh, so i will uh, not go much deep in the uh, assessment part okay because see everything is there in the book the only thing is that uh, there are so many tests for one thing okay but the main thing is that we will be discussing only those tests which is very valid and which has got the very high sensitivity value okay 
which is of gold standard that only we will discuss okay there are other tests as well okay almost like 25 tests special test 25 to 30 special test are there for the need so i am not going to discuss all this okay so uh, for the acl injury the most specific test is the latman test okay latman test you can see uh, you can see then i will uh, try to demonstrate as well okay first see this video i hi and in this case i would like to talk about the latman test which is the most valid test for an acl injury is also known under the name of ritchie trillet or latman trillet test It is the most valid test for an ACL injury, according to a meta-analysis of Benjamin et al. in the year 2006, with a sensitivity of 85% and a specificity of 94%. Some experts recommend to exclude a PCL injury before you test for an ACL injury. The reason for this is that with a PCL injury, the tibia will translate posteriorly. regarding the femur and this could lead to a false impression that you have a lot of translation in the injured leg compared to the healthy leg in order to perform the latman test bring the patient's knee in 30 degrees of flexion and slide lateral rotation of the tibia grab the femur with your outer hand and with your inner hand try to translate the tibia anteriorly What you are looking for is a soft anterior or an anterior translation of more than 3 mm more than in comparison with the healthy leg. All right, this was the Lachman test. Please keep in mind that when you are testing for ligamentous instability that your test results will always be more valid in a chronic situation in comparison with an acute situation. The reason for this is that directly after an injury swelling or muscle spasm will have a negative influence on your test results please make sure you check out our other special test on okay uh, so for the acl injury what was there uh, it was latman test and latman test uh, in latman test uh, what we do we keep the uh, knee in the 30 degree flexion okay kya karte hain 30 degree flexion mein rakhte hain उसके बाद देन व्हाट यू कैन डू यू कैन रोटेट द टीबिया लिटिल बिट लेटरली ओके लेटरली उससे क्या होता है लेटरली रोटेट करने से वंस यू आर डूइंग रोटेटिंग द टीबिया लेटरली ओके सो देयर विल बी मोर स्ट्रेस ऑन द एसीएल लिगामेंट ओके एसीएल लिगामेंट पे मोर स्ट्रेस होगा देन ट्राई टू ट्रांसलेट इट एंटीरियरली ओके आई विल शो यू ऑन द मॉडल ओके सो दैट इट विल बी इजी फॉर यू ओके सो व्हाट आई विल डू आई विल जस्ट डिस्कस एसीएल एंड देन both the uh, i will uh, so okay so perform the post the joint test have your patient in supine lying position and ask your patient to flex his hip to 45 and his knee to 90 degrees and in position slightly sitting on the foot of your patient then palpate the joint line and push the tibia posteriorly in an explosive movement This test is positive if the TBR translates posteriorly more than 6 mm or if you experience a soft and mushy end feel. To perform the posterior draw test, have your patient in supine lying position and ask your patient to flex his hip to 45 and his knee to 90 degrees. You can fix that this position by slightly sitting on the foot of your patient. then palpate the joint line and push the tibia posteriorly in an explosive movement this test is positive if the tibia translates posteriorly more than 6 mm or if you experience a soft and mushy end feel okay uh, so i will uh, just uh, try to demonstrate this day two okay I got the model with me, okay. Uh, so I will just uh, try to demonstrate that. Uh, 
Dr. Pran uh, Pranati, actually, uh, after showing the video, I'm going to demonstrate all these, okay? So, Into. Okay, uh, so what I will do, I will uh, just try to. Okay, uh, so that you can see the full screen video. Are you able to see the full screen video? Can anyone tell me? Okay, are you able to see the full screen video? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I will uh, try to demonstrate. Okay, uh, so are you able to see? So first I am going to demonstrate the Lachman uh, test uh, for the ACL injury. Just one second, yeah. Are you able to listen to me? Okay, uh, so uh, for the uh, Lachman test, what you have to do, you have to keep the knee in the 30 degree flexion, okay? So 30 degree flexion, okay? Keep your one hand over the femur, okay? Hold the femur, okay? Then try to rotate the tibia laterally, okay? So that it will give a stress over the ACL, okay? Interior cruciate ligament, okay? And then what you can do, try to do the anterior translation, okay? Try to do, hold it here, hold the femur tightly, okay? And knee 30 degree and tibia will be slight lateral rotation, laterally rotated so that uh, it will give tension to the ACL, okay, ligament, okay? And then do the anterior translation, okay? And if you are able to do, uh, if you are able to translate the tibia, more almost like uh, you can say more than 3 mm of uh, translation if you are able to do that that means there is injury of the acl injury one quick test you can do for the acl is uh, just keep the patient hip or knee uh, extended okay uh, then ask the patient to relax the leg okay then just Hold this toe, okay, great toe, okay. Just hold the great toe and just do this. Just lift the foot up, okay. What you will see if there is any, like either uh, you can say ACL or PCL, if there is an injury of ACL or PCL, in both the cases, what we will see, you will feel there is a translation of tibia up and down, okay. If you try to just pull it, okay. But if these uh, like ACL or PCL is intact, you won't be able to see any translation of tibia mass. Okay, what you will see, you will be able to lift the whole limb. Okay, but if you try to lift, if there is injury, if there is injury of ACL and PCL, uh, what you will see, you will feel there is an oscillation of tibia on, near the knee joint. Okay, the second test is posterior draw test. Okay. The posterior draw test mainly we are doing for the uh, injury of the PCL, posterior cruciate ligament, sorry, uh, uh, posterior cruciate ligament, okay. So for the posterior cruciate ligament, uh, the knee should be 90 degree flexed, okay, and then hip should be 45 degree, okay. So knee should be 
90 degree flex hip is 45 degree what you can do you can hold this okay uh, okay so you can hold this like this okay then hold the both condyle of the tibia both hold with the both thumb okay with the thumb what you can do you can hold the condyle of the uh, tibia okay and then try to give a posterior force okay try to give a posterior force okay so what you will feel uh, if there is injury of the pcl this tibia will move posteriorly the tibia will move or else what you can do you can hold like this okay okay and then just try to push the tibia posteriorly if the tibia is going posteriorly like almost like uh, the translation is more than if the translation of the tibia is more than 6 mm that says that the test is positive and there is a pcl injury okay or else like slight posteriorly it will go because of the flexibility of the ligament okay like see i can move okay little bit okay not much but if you are able to do more that means it can lead to the it is uh, the test is positive and uh, it confirms that there is a injury of the pcl coming to the next okay for the meniscus injury okay uh, we are doing uh, the mac mori test To research done by Blythe et al. in 2015, the diagnostic accuracy of this test was as low as 63%, which means that only 63% of all patients were correctly diagnosed with musculoskeletal clinician. To conduct this test, have your patient in supine lying position with the passive knee fully flexed. Then, rotate the TBR medially and bring the knee into extension. You want to repeat this process a couple of times with a different angle of knee flex. According to research done by Blythe, are you able to see me? Can anyone reply it over here? Are you able to see the PPT? I think uh, there is some again issue. Just one second, yeah. Okay, uh, so are you able to see the PPT now? Yep. So the next one is uh, the Mac Mori test. Research done by Blythe et al. in 2015, the diagnostic accuracy of this test was as low as 63%, which means that only 63% of all the patients were correctly diagnosed with musculoskeletal clinician. To conduct this test, have your patient in supine lying position with the passive knee fully flexed. Then rotate the TBR medially and bring the knee into extension. 
you want to repeat this process a couple of times with a different angle of knee flexion in order to test the whole posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. In order to test the medial meniscus, bring the knee into full flexion and laterally rotate the tibia. The anterior half of the meniscus is not as easily tested with the McMurray test because the pressure on the meniscus is not as high. This test is considered positive if your patient experiences clicking. Okay, uh, so. For the. Uh, Meniscus injury uh, usually the patient could be in the supine line, okay. But uh, what I'm doing, I'm just uh, trying to do it in the setting only, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so the uh, hips should be 90 degree flat, okay. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm just keeping at uh, this uh, position, okay. okay. See, uh, for the meniscus, we have got the medial and the lateral meniscus, okay. So again, uh, for the both, like for the medial meniscus and lateral meniscus, again, you have to rotate the tibia accordingly in order to give the strength, okay? When you want to test for the medial meniscus, so what you have to do, you have to rotate the tibia laterally, okay? So that it will give a stress over the, okay? It will give stress over the medial meniscus, okay? And then take the knee uh, in the flexion first, okay, then go for the extension, okay, and uh, you have to repeat the movement two, three times in order to feel the lactic, okay. okay. Are you able to see the... Uh, okay, just one second. Okay, uh, I will just uh, minimize these CPT so that you will be able to see the full screen. Okay, so I am doing uh, first time testing for the medial meniscus. Okay, what you can do, uh, keep the knee in the flexion. Okay, okay. then. Try to rotate, hold it over here, okay? Okay, hold it over here, okay, rotate the tibia laterally, okay, so that it will give a stress to the medial meniscus, okay? Once you have rotated the tibia, okay, then try to do the extension of the knee. Again, go, okay, again rotate the tibia laterally and then do the extension.
Are you able to see me and are you able to hear me? Can anyone reply over here? Okay, uh, so, okay, um, might be some technical issue with the app, okay, uh, sometimes. Uh, so I was discussing about the Mac Mori test, okay. So uh, for the meniscus injury, okay. So for the meniscus injury, uh, what uh, we are doing, uh, we are just uh, for uh, the medial and the lateral meniscus, okay. For two, uh, we are doing, so the patient should be in this supine, okay. Hip should be 90 degree flexion, okay. Knee should be 90 degree flexion, okay. But I am just uh, adjusting with the uh, position, okay. I am just demonstrating it in the setting line, okay. So, Okay, all this, okay, that for the medial meniscus, rotate the tibia, okay, and then take it in the extension, okay. You have to repeat it two, three times, okay. Same way, you can do it for the lateral meniscus, okay. For the lateral meniscus, again, the tibia should be rotated medially, okay, so that it will give a stress to the lateral meniscus and that to the extension. And check for the Translation movement, okay. Yeah. So, this is for this meniscus injury, okay. Then we have got the for the medial collateral and this lateral collateral ligament, okay. So, medial collateral and lateral collateral ligament, uh, nothing just uh, it is the vulgus uh, stress or virus stress test, okay. So, uh, vulgus stress and virus stress test. I will just uh, uh, show you, okay. What you can do uh, for the lateral uh, collateral ligament, okay. Keep the uh, patient should be in the supine line, okay. Uh, hold the from the upper like femur medially, okay. Then this you can hold it in the uh, tibia or femur over uh, fibula over here, okay. Keep the knee, uh, that will be more better if you keep uh, like slight, like 5 till 10 degree of the flexion so that uh, the knee will be in not long position, okay? And then give a lateral force, okay? Give a lateral force, the lateral ligament, okay? So once you are giving the lateral force, what you will see if there is a lateral collateral ligament injury, what will happen? The tibia will move. Interiorly, okay, and uh, this the femur will try to move the posterior, uh, sorry, laterally, okay. So you can see the easily that there will be movement of this like this. See, this is uh, like femur, okay. This is my TV, okay. What will happen if I am giving pressure from this side, okay? So it will be like movement of this, okay, opposite movement, okay. Same way you can apply from the opposite side, okay. If I am just Holding the tibia from the lateral side, okay, and then applying the pressure over the tibia, okay, laterally, okay. So again, this is for the medial collateral ligament. Okay. If you are able to feel the translation easily, that means it confirms that there is a injury of the medial collateral ligament. Okay, uh, so this was a brief about the okay. So are you able to see the PPT now? So this was the brief about the assessment part of the knee uh, injury. Okay, uh, basically we were we are looking for the issues uh, injury like uh, the ligament injuries and all these meniscus injury. Okay. So now coming to the because we have to discuss a little bit uh, fundamentals of the. Tape as well, okay. Uh, so we were discussing different types of tapes, uh, like which tape, uh, when to use, where to use. That is again very important, okay. It's not uh, about uh, applying the just the 
like uh, the connect your tape every time okay uh, so many a uh, times so you have to apply the tape okay and the tape should be like it should be selection of the tape should be proper okay it should not be like okay uh, whatever tape you get okay just do that okay so the main challenging thing is that whenever we talk about the taping uh, usually uh, if you ask anyone if they are using it if you ask like are you using the tape they will tell you yes i am using it which tape then they will uh, show you uh, if they are not able to tell the name okay they can show you different colorful tape okay that is again the kinetio tape okay but not always we don't need always the kinetio tape for the injury okay sometimes we need other different types of tape as well so i will be discussing all these different types of tape okay so you can see uh, see uh, like uh, we have about basically uh, if you are talking about almost like every one of us are using tape okay whether it is microfiber or whether we are using the cello tape or any other type of tape paper tape any type of tape okay so all those are tape okay and what does this tape do it acts as a supporting okay a structure okay it acts as a supporting structure to any of the injury or any of the like soft tissue injury and to give the support to the soft tissue for the weaker muscles it gives extra support okay so the main challenging thing is like which tape we have to use okay whether it is rigid tape athletic tape sport tape all three types of tapes are the same type of tape rigid athletic and sports okay then we have got the dynamic tape and then we have got the kinetic tape but all the type of tape it comes in two categories only one is elastic tape and another one is non elastic tape okay so if you are talking about the elastic the name itself uh, suggest elastic means which can be stretched okay you are able to stretch those tape okay if you are able to stretch those tape that are the elastic tape okay i will just uh, show you uh, see this one is the kinetic tape this is uh, the elastic tape i will just show you so i am just tearing this tape okay so can you see that okay i am able to stretch it okay elasticity means 